All right, let's take a look at these two, two uh, equations and let's see how they're the same and see how they're different. Okay, so the first one is 2x plus 6x equals 15 minus 23. And take a really good look at that because this is going to make a big difference on how you solve them. 2x minus 23 equals negative 15 plus 6x. A lot of times we know how to solve all of this while you're sitting here watching a video and then you go home and go, uh, uh, how'd you do that? Okay, now the good thing is you can go watch the video again because I know you'd be thrilled to watch this video about 37 times a day. But the truth of the matter is if you just understand this, it'll make your life so much easier. So let's look at the two of these and see how they're different. Don't solve them yet. Just think about how they're different. Okay, did you think? All right. I'm going to tell you. Here's how they're different. This one, has, this first equation has variables you can, or terms you can combine on both sides. This one does not. I, can con I cannot combine this because they're not like terms, and I cannot combine these because they're not like terms. So this is different. This is, we have not solved anything like this yet, but it's not a big deal. Okay, but let's go back to this because we have solved this, and, and let's solve it. 2x plus 6x, we try to combine on one side, so we'll go on the left side. 2x plus 6x is 8x equals 15 minus 23. So now we're going to go to this side, we're going to combine here. I have 15, I owe you 23, so I owe you 8. Okay, not done. Hope by now you know you're not done because that coefficient is not 1. So we're going to divide by 8, we're going to divide by 8. Good night. And we got 1x or x equals negative 1. So that's the answer to that question. And you can check it. Feel free to go home and check that. All right. Look at this problem. I look at the left side, cannot combine, not like terms. Look at the right side, cannot combine. Here there's variables and numbers on both sides. This is the first time we ever saw this. It doesn't really matter where you start. But I'm going to tell you something. It really will be a lot easier for you because of the types of equations that there are, to start with a variable first. Now, I have to tell you, I tell my daughter this, my daughter refuses to start with a variable first. And every single time she gets to the equations where I know she's going to screw up, I let her screw up and she screws up because she's not starting with the variable first. It doesn't matter. You can get the right answer, even if you don't. But sometimes it really does make your job easier if you start with the variables first. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, it doesn't matter if I start here or start here. It doesn't matter which side you get the variable to, and it doesn't matter which side you get the number to as long as you get them to opposite sides. However, because I like this whole left to right thing, and later on in, in the course you'll be solving inequalities, okay, it actually is easier to get the variables to the left. So I'm going to get all the variables to the left. So I'm going to start here, I'm going to start with the variable, I'm going to subtract 6x, and I'm bring it to the left. So that's what I'm going to do here, okay? So now I have to, and again, I can do this because how you move, I know it's the first, well, that's not the first time I'm moving a variable. We've done that before. And remember, to move back and forth, left to right, I'm going to use either addition or subtraction based on what already has been done. So that's a plus. I need to subtract on both sides to keep it in balance. So I have 2x. I owe you 6x. So I owe you 4x minus 23 equals negative 15, and that's 0. I don't write the zero unless it represents a side. Now we're back to exactly where we were in the last, the last time we did these problems is now we just have to, we know we have all the variables to the left. We're going to get all the numbers to the right. Okay? So I'm not going to touch him. I'm not going to touch him. He's going. So I'm going to add 23. I'm going to add 23. And we get negative 4x equals, I owe you 15, but I have, I have more than I owe, so I know right now I'm going to have money, and I have 8. Okay, but again, I'm not done, and I'm not done because there's a coefficient different from 1 attached to your x. So I'm going to distribute, um, sorry, I'm going to divide by negative 4 because it's the opposite of multiplying. If I divide that side by negative 4, I'm going to divide that side by negative 4. So I get x, because good night. Signs are different, so we get a negative. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So the answer is x equals negative 2. So it doesn't matter how you start this problem. I'm just going to warn you, and you may want to start with the variables first. And I'm going, I'm going to, though you don't have to, I'm going to push them all, all the variables to the left. So that's what I'm going to do first. Okay? Let's check that, because that's a totally different problem, easy to check, and then we'll do some other problems. And those checks will be left to you. Okay, so I'm going to put the check here. I'm going to leave that up, and I'm going to put the check right here. You think I'll learn to write with the, to erase with the white side? Okay, so here we go. I'm a slow learner. So 
So it's 2x minus 23 equals negative 15 plus 6x. And x is negative 2. So here we go. So everywhere we see an x, every place we see an x, we're going to put in negative 2. So it's 2, parentheses, 6, parentheses. Everywhere we see that parentheses now, that's where the x should be, and the x is negative 2. Here's what I'm going to do so it doesn't get confusing. I'm going to do the left side, then I'm going to do the right side. Okay, so this is negative 4 minus 23. And now I owe you 4, I owe you 23, so I owe you 27. If we did this right, this side will come out to also negative 27. So let's see what we got. Order of operations, parentheses first. This is negative 15. We're going to multiply here. A positive times a negative is a negative. 6 times 2 is 12. And that is negative 27, because I owe you 15, I owe you 12, so I owe you 27. All right, so that is correct. So that's how you solve when there's variables and numbers on both sides. Not really hard. So the whole point is to simplify the left side, simplify the right side, then, so that's clean up before you move, then start moving. If you have variables and numbers on both sides, I'm going to start here and move all the variables to the left and move all the numbers to the right because later on that will become a lot easier to do. So let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at these. Now notice, if I go to the left side of the equation, there's nothing to combine here. So nothing to do right here. Same thing if I go to the right side of the equation, nothing to do here. Notice that there are variables and numbers on both sides. This is where I'm going to just take control and say, listen, I'm going to move the variables first. Okay? So I'm, I like to move the variables to the left. That's just my deal. So I'm going to do the opposite of what's been done. That's a positive 4x, so I'm going to subtract 4x. But if I subtract 4x here, I've got to subtract 4x on this side. And remember, the side is determined by the equal sign. Okay? So I've got to go to the other side of the equal sign. So I have 6x. I owe you 4x, so I have 2x. And now good night, because they're opposites, and that's 14. So 2x minus 2 equals 14. Now, I'm not done because I don't have all the variables on one side and all the numbers on the other. So now I, ha I have all the variables on the left. I'm going to get all the numbers to the right. I'm going to do the opposite of what's been done again. So I'm going to add 2 to this side. But if I add 2 to that side, I have to add 2 to this side of the equal because I have to keep the scale in balance. So this is 2x, good night, because the sum of opposites are 0, equals, I have 14, I have 2, I have 16. Almost done, almost done, not quite, okay. The coefficient of the x is not a 1, so I have to keep going. The opposite of multiplication is division. If I divide on that side, I have to divide on this side. I divide by the same number, because the, o the only way I'm going to get a positive 1 is if these are the exact same numbers. So that's x equals 8. And I'm done there. All right. This one looks a lot like that one, except for one little difference. You've got to be careful about this P. Remember, this is a 1P. You might want to put that in there. That's up to you. I like it there, personally. OK, so I look on the left side. Nothing can combine. I look on the right side. Nothing can combine. I cannot combine this 5P with this 1P. They're on opposite sides of the equation. Think of that as a fence. You cannot go over the fence. I draw you the fence, but you've seen my apples, so I'm not even going to bother with a fence. All right, so here we go. I'm going to subtract this 1p. I'm going to subtract 1p. And that's 4p minus 6 equals 2. That's 0. Okay, so now I have the simpler equ equation. I'm going to get all the variables on one side, all the numbers on the other. I'm not going to touch him. He's alone. I'm not going to touch him. He's got no friends. He's going. Okay, so the opposite of minus 6 is positive 6. But if I do it to that side, I can come over the other side of the equals and do it to this side. So this is 4p equals 8. Because that goes. I'm still not done. I may never be done. I'm still not done because I'm attached by multiplication here. Coefficient is not 1. I have to divide by exactly what's there. I divide by 4. I get p. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So p equals 2. All right, awesome. Okay, this is one of my favorite problems. Let's talk about this one a little bit. Okay, I look at the left side. There's something to simplify. I can't combine, but I can do this. I have, I have parentheses. I cannot do anything inside these parentheses because there's no like terms. But I can multiply. I can do what we call distributing. 
Okay, so that's 9x plus 15. And once I distribute, you must, must get rid of that parentheses. And now I just bring this down because I cannot combine them. So I checked here, could simplify, check here, nothing to simplify. Now again, I have variables and numbers on both sides. I'm going to start with the variables first. Okay, my, my daughter should do that. She doesn't do that, but I'm going to start with the variable first, and then I'm going to subtract 7x. Now I've got to go to the other side of the equal, and notice every time I've done that, I put it under its like term. The x is under the x's. Okay, so I have 9x, but I owe you 7x's, so I have 2x plus 15 equals 5. Okay, almost done. Variables have to be on one side, numbers on the other. Not touching him. Not touching him, he's got no friends. He's going. All right, so the opposite of adding 15 is subtracting 15. Whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other, the other side of the equal. 2x, good night. I don't write that 0 because it doesn't represent the side. I have 5, but I owe you 15, so I owe you 10. Almost done. Not done because the coefficient is not a 1. The opposite of multiplication is division, so we divide. Good night. We just get 1x or x equals, signs are different, so it's negative. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So x is negative 5. Okay, we're going to go to the next three. Some of these are really big. I'm going to write probably uh, maybe two on the board. Okay, here we go. All right, let's take a look at some of these. All right, let's look at the left side. On the left side, you have a parenthesis, but I cannot do anything inside these parentheses because they're not like terms. So let's see what I have to do. Well, see this minus? Remember, there's always a number in front of the parentheses. I'm going to put a 1 there, so there's a negative 1, which tells me I'm going to distribute that negative 1, but be careful because when you distribute a negative anything, it's going to change all the signs. Once you distribute, you must drop the parentheses. So here we go. Negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. A negative times a negative is a positive 2x because it's 1 times 2x, which is just 2x. So the numbers don't change but the signs do because you're distributing a negative. And that equals 4. Obviously nothing to do on the right side. Well now I'm going to go back to the left side and collect my like terms. Remember this x is 1x, so I have 1x and I also have 2x. They're like terms because they have the same variable factor. So 1x plus 2x is 3x. Minus 8 equals 4. Okay. So now I have to get all the variables to one side, all the numbers to the other. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to touch him. He's alone. I'm not going to touch him. He's got no friends. I am going to touch this negative 8. I've got to do the opposite operation. Whatever they do to one side, I have to do to the other. And again, we mean the other side of the equal sign. So we have 3x equals 12. Almost done. Because now I need this coefficient to be a 1. So the opposite of multiplication is division. I have to divide by exactly what's there because when I reduce, that's got to be a positive. And only the same signs here will give me that positive x equals 4. And I'm done with that. All right, that looks awesome, right? I mean, I almost couldn't fit this one on the board. That's when you know it's awesome. Okay, let's take a look at this and let's get some like terms going on. Well, we have 3x and negative 6x. So I have 3x but I owe you 6x, so I owe you 3x. Now for the numbers. I owe you 15, but I have 2, so I owe you 13. If you have to do that off to the side, do that. I, I, I don't suggest moving anything, because moving might mean moving across the equal sign. I do not want you to get that confused. Okay, so now I'm going to go to this side. I have 9x's, but I owe 3x's, so I have 6x's. I owe you 6 I owe you 16, so now I owe you a lot. I owe you 22. Now look at this. Variables and numbers on both sides. I can start any way I want. You know how I'm starting? Yep, I'm starting here. I'm going to bring all the variables to that side. This is a plus. I've got to do the opposite. So I'm doing negative 6x. I go across the equal sign to my x's. Put my negative 6x under my like term. I owe you 3x. I owe you 6x. I owe you 9x. Minus 13 equals negative 22. Almost done. All right. So now we have to get all the variables to one side, all the numbers to the other. Not touch, touching him. He's alone. Not touching him. He's got no friends. He's going. Okay. So 
I have to do the opposite, so I add 13, go to the other side of the equals, add 13. I get negative 9x equals, I owe 22, but I have 13, so I owe more than I have, so I owe money, I owe 9. Attach by multiplication, so I have to divide because the coefficient is not a 1, so I divide by exactly what's there, that's a 1. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 9 divided by 9 is 1. So x equals 1. That, that, the check for that is actually harder than the problem. It takes you so long to do the check, but you can do it. Okay, let's do number 6. You want to try number 6? Why don't you try number 6, and then we'll do it together. At least do the first step of number 6. There's like nothing more fun than this one. Look at this one. It almost reaches the end of the board. This is cool. All right, so let's look at the left side of the equation. And we have parentheses, but these two cannot be combined. Okay, remember combined, combined means added or subtracted. They cannot be combined because they're not like terms. But we have a negative 4 out here attached by multiplication, so we're going to multiply this or distribute this. Remember, the negative is going to change all the signs in here. So here we go. You ready? As soon as I distribute, you must, must get rid of those parentheses. So here we go. Negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. Negative times a negative is a positive 20 plus 8. Okay, let's finish simplifying this side. I'm going to put the equal in there, and we'll be on that side in a minute. Let's just finish this so we don't confuse everything. Okay, negative 8x has no friends, so it just stays. But I can combine 20 and 8. I have 20, I have 8, so I have 28. You no longer are going to go 20 plus 8 is 28. No longer. You're going to go, I have 20, I have 8. That's what you're going to do probably for the rest of your life, or a good portion of it. Okay. I find myself doing that when I go home now. I don't go, oh, well, I owe 10. I, I, I owe that checkout. I go, I owe 6. I have 10. Okay. Anyway, it's bizarre. Okay. Let's look at the right side. On the right side, I go inside the parentheses. I cannot combine them because they're not like terms, but I do have multiplication. Multiplication over terms is distributive property. However, be careful because, again, you're distributing the negative, so it's going to change all the signs in there. So here we go. Remember, there's a 1 there you don't see. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3x. A negative times a negative is a positive 12. We're going to stay there and finish combining. I like, to what, I like to write the variable part first, but you don't necessarily have to. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write negative 3x. Has no friends, so I just leave it like that. I have 16, I have 12, I have 28. If you wrote this... That's absolutely fine. It's the same thing. Let's think about why. The, the 3x is negative. The 3x is negative. The 28 is positive. The 28 is positive. It makes no difference how you write that. I just tend to do that. It makes no difference, but don't, don't get nervous about that. That's all good. It doesn't matter. Okay. As long as you're keeping the sign with your number, you're good. Okay. Guess where I'm starting? Yep. Variable first. Variable first. Okay. So I'm going to add 3x. But if I do it to that side, I have to do it to this side. Now I'm going to combine. I owe you 8, but I have 3, so I owe you 5x's. Because I owe more than I have, so it's got to be negative. Plus 28 equals, good night, 28. Oh, i love loving this problem. Loving this problem. Okay, ready? All the variables on one side, numbers on the other. I'm not going to move him. He's alone. I'm not going to move him. He's got no friends. So I'm going to move this person. All right, so I'm going to subtract. All right, it's not really a person. I'm going to subtract 28 because it's the opposite operation. Oh, notice what happens here. Very cool. This is negative 5x. Good night. Equals. This is, the other, this is the only thing on this side of the equal. I must write the 0 because it's the only thing there. Almost done. Very close to done. Not done because the coefficient is not a 1. It's attached by multiplication, so I have to divide. I'm going to divide by negative 5. I'm going to divide by negative 5. And I get x equals, remember, 0 divided by anything is 0. And if I check this, I will get the right answer. I will get the left side equal to the right side. So x equals 0 is my answer. Okay? 
Now notice all of the equations we've solved. Every single one of the equations we've solved have x equals something. x equals 0, x equals I don't know what, what else, whatever else we've solved. x equals 5, whatever it is. Okay? All of those equations are called conditional equations. That means they are true based on a condition. So if this says x equals 0, that means this is true only when x is 0. On the condition that x is 0, that makes this true. So when x is 0, this is a true statement. Anything where we have x equals some number, which is everything we've solved, everything we've solved in this course has been a conditional equation. But that's not the only type there are. In real life, you're going to take a word problem and put it into an, put it into an equation, and sometimes it can't be solved. Sometimes it can be, sometimes it can't be. But a, a, conditional equations are only true based on their, of what you plug in. If you plug in eight, x is 0, you get a true statement. You plug in anything else, you get a false statement. That's why it's called a conditional. Let me show you some other types. They're actually pretty cool. Because not everything has an answer. I know you find that hard to believe that not everything has an answer. But not any, everything has an answer. All right, let's, let's attempt these two problems and see how they're different. OK, we're going to go to the left side, see if we can simplify. And there's nothing to simplify here, so we're just going to write that down. Now look at the right side. The right side looks like a lot of fun. See, the left side's boring, but here we go. We have parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside these parentheses. So I see that we have multiplication. This is the distributed property, so we're going to distribute. Remember when you distribute, OK, there's a 1 there that you don't see. 2 times 1 is 2, 2x. Which actually, if I don't put the 1 there anymore, you, you really should get the gist of this, because this is just 2 times x, which is 2x. OK, I don't really probably need to keep putting the 1, just so you know that. OK, and then 2 times 1 is positive 2 plus 3x, minus 7. We're going to keep combining this side. We have 2x, we have 3x, so we have 5x. Now we have a positive 2 and a negative 7. So I have $2, but I owe you 7. So I owe more than I have, so that's a negative. I have 2, I owe you 7, so that's a negative 5. Now you might see something right now already. Whether you do or not, don't worry, just continue, because I want to make a point about this. I'm going to subtract 5x because I have numbers and letters on, the both, on both sides. I like to start with the letters first. I'm going to, go to the, I'm going to take all my x's here and bring them to the left side. If I subtract here, then I have to subtract here under my like terms. Good night. I get negative 5 equals negative 5. Now, here's what you don't want to do. People go absolutely nuts at this point. They're like, oh, what do I do? So they start doing this, positive 5, positive 5. And they get 0 equals 0. You don't have to go that far, because the bottom line is that notice what you just did here. You have a true statement, no variable true statement. But here, which is what you got at the beginning, was, a variable, was no variable true statement. That's all you care about. When the variable drops out, absolutely stop. Just stop. And look at what you have, and this is a true statement. What that means when you have a true statement, when the variable drops out and you have a true statement, that tells me that any number I choose, any number, will solve that. It's called an identity. An identity means that this will always be true forever and ever and ever, and the answer is all real numbers, which if you'd like, I don't think we talked about the symbol for all real numbers. I will here. The symbol for all real numbers is just a big script R. So all real numbers is your answer. Okay? All real numbers are the answer. Now, if I asked you what type of equation this is, the type, the type of equation this is, is an identity. How do I know that? I know that because the variables dropped out and you have a true statement. That's how I know it's an identity. But it, so if somebody says, what type of equation do you have, the answer is identity. When somebody says, what solves this, the answer is all real numbers. Because what solves it, it means, what can I stick in there for my x's to make a true statement? And the answer to that is any number I want, any real number I want. So the type is an identity, but the answer is all real numbers. Just like before, when we got x equals 0, the variable did not drop out, x equals 0. So in that last equation we did, that was a conditional. Okay? So the type of, 
the type of equation it was was conditional, but its solution is zero. So know the difference between type and solution or answer. Okay? So I know that's all real numbers because it's a true statement. Okay, so let's take a look at, so no matter what I plug in there, it's going to be true. That's kind of cool. Always true. And you can do that. Pick a number, plug it in, and it'll work. All right, let's look at this one. Let's see if this is also an identity or if it's a conditional like we've had before or maybe even something else. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the left side. Let's see if we can combine anything or simplify anything. Well, I look inside the parentheses. No like terms, so I cannot combine. But notice I have multiplication, so I'm going to distribute. Once I distribute, I let my parentheses go. So 4 times 2 is 8. Positive times a positive is a positive. 4 times x is 4x plus 1. Before I go to the other side, I'm actually thinking I'm going to run out of room. I'm probably going to have to move this over, and I will in a second. But before I go to the other side, I'm going to finish this. I like to deal with my x's first. I'm going to write 4x. There's no like terms for that. 8 plus 1, I have 8, I have 1, so I have 9. So that's how that side looks. And I'm just going to rewrite this over there because I don't want, I want you to be able to see it. Okay, so here's number 2. This is what I got so far. On the left side, we have 4x plus 9. On the right side, we have 7x. I'm just going to copy it down so I can get it all off the board. Minus 3 times the quantity x minus 2. This marker doesn't want to get off the board. Oh, okay, just making sure it's not dry erase. Okay, I did that once. Put a non dry erase on the board. That was so not good. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at the right side. Okay, I'm looking inside the parentheses. Nothing to combine. I come out, I'm going to distribute this negative 3. Again, I'm distributing a negative, so all the signs are going to change. Negative 3 times x, negative 3x. A negative times a negative is a positive 6. Okay, again, I'm just going to come down. 7x minus 3x. I have 7x's. I owe you 3x's because these are like term, same variable factor. I have 7x's. I owe you 3, so I have 4x's plus 6. So here's what I have. I have on the left side 4x plus 9. I have on the right side 4x plus 6. Okay? So let's continue with this problem. I want to get all the variables to one side, all the numbers to the other. I have variables and numbers on both sides, so it doesn't matter where I start, but guess where I'm starting? Okay, yep, variables first. And it's for these exact types of problems that it's better to do variables first. Good night, they're opposites. Good night, they're opposites. And again, what happens is your variable drops out. When your variable drops out, stop. Notice this is a false statement. Now watch. If I don't stop, watch what's going to happen. I can go all day. Watch. Uh-oh. What do I do? Uh-oh. Three, zero. Uh-oh. What do I do? People do this all the time. Uh-oh. What do I do? You can go on forever. So as soon as the variable drops out, just stop. As soon as the variable drops out. And just determine if it's false or true. This is false, which tells me that no matter what I plug in here, it's going to be false. So... The solution or the answer is no solution. And if you want a symbol for that, looks like this. That means no solution. That's why you shouldn't make your zeros with a line through it, because a zero with a line through it is not a zero. It's a no solution in math. So your solution is no solution. But you call this the type of equation this is, the type of equation that this is, is called a contradiction. And in a contradiction, the variable will drop out, just like in the identity, but you will get a false statement. Okay? You will get a false statement. And the solution is no solution. So no matter what you plug in for the variable, you'll get a false statement. In your workbook, there is a, a little table that kind of summarizes all of this. Remember conditional? 
the variable does not drop, drop out, your answer is whatever it says. X is 5, Y equals 5, Y equals 4, whatever the answer is, that's your answer. The variable does not drop, drop out. In a, in a contradiction or an identity, the variable always drops out. Okay? In an identity, you'll have a true statement at the end. In a contradiction, you'll have a false statement. And the last piece of advice I have for you is, well, one, as soon as the variable drops out, stop. And the second thing is, make sure you look, listen to, look for the directions of the problem. If it's a solve, the answer is going to either be x equals whatever, or no solution, or all real numbers. If it says, what is the type of equation that this is, then your answer is going to be either contradiction, conditional, or identity. Okay, so that takes care of equation solving. The next time we meet, we're going to talk about linear equations in one variable and problem solving, which is a lot more fun. It's real-life problems, and we'll be able to see a lot more things. Mm -hmm.